Welcome to 3XM, everyone. I'm Alex D. And with me is James Dotson. Dotson, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right, man. I just enjoyed a nice first weekend of college football season. It feels like the uh, the year has officially begun now. And what a great weekend of college football was. Um, I think it might even be the first weekend where we had games on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And, and Monday. Monday. <laughs> There's so much for a weekend. It takes up the whole week, but I'll tell you what, I'm not complaining. Um, but, Dawson, what are your thoughts of the games this weekend? What stuck out to you the most? Uh, so many little things. I mean, the biggest issue, I think, was something that I'm not sure I've ever seen more than once in my life, and I saw it three different games this, this weekend, and that was with uh, lightning postponements and even cancellations of game because of them. I mean, you first saw it with uh, Notre Dame Stadium getting lit up literally by lightning and having you evacuate. Uh, Notre Dame ended up losing the game after uh, probably about five hours total of delays. Then you saw uh, Michigan end their game early, against Western to be able to uh, save their players. Uh, they ended up winning that game by default. And then same with West Virginia. They ended their game against Marshall early. So I, I don't know. I, this might become a new trend, I guess. I've never seen such strong storms here uh, to start a football season. Normally, the weather's calmed down by now. Well, I mean, yeah, it seemed like every game had bad weather and all these games being canceled because of lightning. One game that stuck out to me was the West Virginia Marshall game that was on Sunday. Now let me ask you this. If you're a fan and your team is losing and the game has to be postponed or delayed because of lightning and your athletic director decides and agrees with the opposing team's athletic director to call the game when the game is still in reach and there is one quarter, one full quarter of football left to, to be played. How do you feel? Well, in Marshall's case, I'm not too concerned. It was fourth quarter. They were down 34-13. That's a three-touchdown disadvantage, and you're playing a team that you have never beaten before in the history of your program. So that one I can definitely understand that, you know what, we need to, we need to just take it easy. Let's not hurt our players. It's a long season. Western Michigan, I mean, they were down 24, 30 to 10, but it was still in the third quarter at that point, too. So that one I'm a little bit more concerned about because of how much time was left in the game. Marshall may be a better opponent to West Virginia, but time-wise, I think uh, Western Michigan is a little bit more controversial. And you look at it, Notre Dame was the home team, and they were losing, and they never stopped the game. Not that I think they have the ultimate choice as the home team, but I think there's something to be said there, too. And, you know, it's just a frustrating thing, especially for coaches. And I, how do you prepare for that? You know, how do you prepare that for that in the week, a course of training and having your um, players practice? I mean, you really don't prepare for a situation such as a lightning delay or things like that. So it's definitely a frustrating weekend of college football, to say the least. Huh, so one, one, of the co one, one of the coaches said that their players hadn't eaten in 10 hours, and they wanted them to still play. That, that, you just can't do that. You can't do that to any person, nevertheless an athlete who's running out there uh, in 80-degree weather or more in heavy pads. Uh, you got to think safety first. Uh, and I completely agree. But, you know, like, it, it is frustrating. And, yeah, if someone who hasn't eaten 10 hours, then you got you got to do something about that. Um now, I want to talk about some, some of the contenders, the top five. Uh, who, I know it's only been one week in a college football, but what teams impressed you the most? What teams do you think have a legitimate, legitimate shot of going to the national championship game and winning it? Well, I must say this with a grain of salt that I think LSU might have one of the better chances. Now, this being said, I had them losing and losing big to Oregon here in week one. And with a backup quarterback especially, didn't think they had a chance. And they certainly proved me wrong, as Les Miles has been known to do time and time again. So uh, LSU is definitely a strong one. Um, they have to survive an early trip to West Virginia and then a trip later in the year to Tuscaloosa to play Alabama. But I think one of those two teams has to make the championship game. Uh, as for the other one, uh, it's Oklahoma in my mind. They they don't have as difficult of a schedule to start with, and their team is really good. Their their big matchup is against number five Florida State this week. Um, if they can if they can go down to Florida State 
down in Seminole land and win this week, I see them having no issue the rest of the year uh, making it to the national title game. Mm-hmm. Well, let me ask you this. Boise State every year is, it seems like they're in the top five. And, of course, last year they had that heartbreaking loss um, when they played Nevada. They beat Georgia this week in the battle of most epic-looking uniforms ever. Um, let me ask you, what does Boise State finally have to do to get to the national championship game? Um, is there anything they can do? They, they need one more quality opponent every year. Uh, it's one thing, I mean, even if they were playing a top five or top ten type team at the beginning of the year, it's still the beginning of the year. Nobody's really good here at the beginning of the year. Um, I mean, even when they played Oregon a couple of years ago in the Garrett Blunt incident, they Oregon ended up winning every game, I believe, after that. But they lost the first game because that was, you know, the beginning of the year, you can't tell anything. They need to have at least one more quality opponent somewhere in the middle of the year if possible. I'd love to see them play against uh, Notre Dame even. I just think that that would be a nice matchup. And the fact that uh, Notre Dame can control its own schedule as an independent I think that'd be a nice way to get even more prime time exposure. And, I mean, one of the things that I keep hearing is that Boise has lost one game in the past three or four years they deserve, if they go undefeated, to go to a national title game this year. You can't look at prior years. I don't care no matter what happens. You can't look at what a team's done two or three years uh, in the previous as to what a team should be for the national title for this year. Not only that, though, Boise wants a home game. Nobody wants to go and travel out to that blue turf where Boise State is practically unbeatable. Oh, well, and I agree with you, obviously. Of course, I, I believe, too, they want to fill up their um, schedule with tougher opponents. The reason I said do they not want um, a tougher opponent on their schedule is because we've seen throughout the years programs not stacking up their schedule. Um, Penn State, they play five cupcakes every year. West Virginia, the years... They, they were national title title contention. They had no one. They were playing um, Division One AA opponents, max schools all the time. And you know, there's been controversies about that because they knew they're at number two or three, and they couldn't afford a loss. So they basically rode this off schedule and decided to win out, even if it was against weaker opponents. If they'd win out, they'd get into the national title picture. But that's blown up in their face before. Um, yeah. But speaking. Um, like I said earlier, it is a battle of epic uniforms between uh, Boise State and Georgia. What did you think about Maryland's uniforms? I thought that was just too much on the eyes. I wanted to vomit after looking at those uniforms. I'll tell you what, it was a great idea, poorly executed. I love what they were thinking in trying to bring the whole state together behind their team by implementing the state flag as part of the uniform. But having one half of the flag on half of the jersey and the other half on the left side, I, I, uh, you're right, it was an eyesore. And I thought uh, Oregon had bad uniforms over the years. This one, to me, was an absolute eyesore. I know a lot of people liked it. I liked the idea. It just didn't come out as well as anybody had intended. And I feel badly because of it, because it was a great idea, and now they're getting criticism, which is well-deserved for how it actually looked. Um, but I just feel bad because it was a great idea that just went wrong. Well, I think the worst part is, you know, they had a great win on national television with the only college football game being played last night, and now, fortunately, all that everyone's talking about Maryland is their football uniforms. I mean, even LeBron James, who probably never, ever thought about Maryland sports in his life, tweeted how ugly it is. I mean, that's, I mean, that's just ridiculous. Um, but um, is there anything else you'd like to throw out there this, um, from this weekend, Austin? Um, I would just like to throw out for, that there's going to be a couple of big, big games to look at from this coming week. Um, game day is up in Ann Arbor for the first ever night game between uh, Michigan and Notre Dame. Notre Dame is going with their new young Tommy Gun, uh, the more spread offense after Dane Chris. So I think we're going to have an interesting matchup up there. Um, I talked about the Florida State versus number one Oklahoma matchup. We can see another big game like we did last week with, uh, with Oregon and LSU, another early game top five matchup. But I think the game of the week is going to be right here in Happy Valley uh, between Penn State and Alabama. Um, it's, uh, Alabama's got a young offense, especially a young quarterback, and uh, you're going to be hearing one of the greatest uh, student sections in the nation 
uh, be absolutely loud all night, and I, it's going to be a big challenge for Bama's young team. Uh, I, I'm interested to see what happens. They're ranked number three. I'm going to be interested to see where they are after this game. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a, obviously I'm a Penn State student myself, and I'm very ecstatic for this game. Um, I, I don't know if they're going to be able to pull it off. They Alabama kind of handled them pretty easy uh, last year, but they are at home. Um, if the quarterback situation can kind of just at least hold together for this game, they have a decent chance to win um, the game. Um, but that wraps it up for this uh, college football edition of 360 Sports Network. Uh, Dawson, have a good night. And um, tune in for more episodes, everyone. Have a great night. I hate you too, but I won't stop now. Come on, come on. Come on.